For many distributors in today's chaotic business environment, trade-offs abound. In order to keep their customers happy, they must add to their bench of customer service personnel, a practical challenge in today's tight labor market. Not to mention this often comes with an increased cost of service and added stress when operating margins are tight. Unfortunately, many small and mid-sized distributors often feel their hands are tied. And in order to keep pace with the customer experience being offered by big names like Amazon and Granger, they address it the best way they know how, with people. But industry experts are increasingly stressing the benefits that come along with digitizing certain tasks, most notably those that add lots of costs, but little value to the overall process. Instead, the latest digital tools can enable distributors to automate these tasks, resulting in some net gains. So instead of spending money on non-revenue generating activities, how can companies build them into their digital processes and actually enhance customer satisfaction simultaneously? Well, joining us today is Frank Heenan, Group Vice President of Americas for Epicor Software. Frank has spent years working with distribution companies as they work to transform their business to become leading edge providers in the markets that they serve. Today, we'll be discussing how distributors of any size can have it all by freeing up resources, saving money, and offering better user experience all at the same time. Welcome, Frank. All right, Frank. Uh, so many small and medium-sized distributors want to compete with the Grangers and the MSCs, maybe even the Amazons when it comes to user experience via e-commerce. I think the problem is that they don't always feel equipped to do that. What's holding them back in your opinion? I think the first thing that holds a lot of companies back is developing a strategy, right? So most people are so focused on, I have to have a solution in place, but they don't step back and say, well, what's our strategy? You know, what are we looking to get out of our e-commerce environment? Is it going to be more of a self-service tool for our clients? Uh, is it going to be more of a selling tool for our organization? Is it going to be both? You know, and the final thing is it's an outward representation of our organization. So if we start at the top level of what is our strategy and what we're looking to gain from it, and then once we have that strategy defined, then start walking through how do we implement that strategy for the field as it relates to e-commerce. All right. So many distributors are being challenged with the tough labor market, obviously. Um, with this reality, how do you think they should focus their efforts of their team members that they have on what's most important and then also continue to provide a user experience that customers expect? For, uh, In other words, is there an alternative to just throwing more customer service reps at this problem? Yeah, I think that that's the biggest thing. I, I, my, I, my argument to that is I would articulate it this way. If we go to a number of distributorships throughout the country and we walked into their customer service organization, I'd argue 60 to 70 percent of all inbound traffic is non-revenue generating. More, more types of function where they should be thinking about how can I self-service? How can I introduce automation? You know, when companies are calling in, what's the status of my order? Can I get a copy of my invoice? Do you have the tracking number? Did this product ship? So on and so forth. All those things, you should be able to instill self-service, right? And start educating and training your client how they can sustain or self-service themselves. So that can either mitigate your need from throwing bodies at it, but also more importantly, freeing up the current staff you have <clears throat> that is doing non-revenue generating activities to focus more on revenue generating activities and allow your e-commerce site to be that self-service mechanism for the client. Finally, Frank, do you have some recommendations for first steps to help these businesses move forward in improving this customer experience? Yeah, I think, you know, <laughs> One of the things I would say from a first step perspective is, is, is simple to say, difficult to do, and that's voice of the customer. And what I mean by that is if they start sitting down from a, a marketing perspective and having meaningful dialogue with their customers of what they're expecting from their organization, how can we improve my experience within your business? You can then start building strategies and solutions around that. So I would start it off by getting voice of the customer from your your consumer, right? How do they think of you, right? What do they think of you? How can you better service them? They're going to give you feedback. You know, a lot of times what I see is many companies, I'll, I'll borrow the, the line from a field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. 
Well, I can articulate as sure as I am involved. If you build it, they won't just come. So there needs to be a strategy around that. There needs to get feedback from your consumer as to what they think, how you can better service them. And then from there, you're starting to build solutions around that to improve upon that customer experience. Going back to what I stated earlier, freeing up your customer service reps to start performing more revenue generating activity. And then finally, that outward rep, that outward representation of your organization to the world should now be improved, right? So when, when individuals or consumers start saying, well, I want your organization to function more like that or this, you're now starting to provide that medium or mechanism for them to do that. And ultimately you believe that's in reach for even small and medium sized distributors, yes? Yeah, I, I think it's a reach, right? A lot of times what a lot of organizations on the on the smaller side or mid, mid, mid-sized companies, everybody wants that Amazon effect. Everybody wants that Granger effect. Everybody wants that MSC effect. But what they don't see, think of this way, all of us have seen those images of an iceberg where there's like a little tip sticking out above the water and underneath of it is about three football fields in length of a rock. Well, if you really think about it, that Amazon effect or that Granger effect or that MSC effect, we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg. We're not seeing all the work and the diligence and investment that's being made in order to give that end user experience. You, you just visually, you just, I want that, but we don't really look at what's the effort to get us there and how do we go about doing that? It's just, I put out an e-commerce site or I put up a website and once it's up there, uh, everybody's going to come to it. Mm, not really. You got to market it. There's got to be a strategy around it. You got to get your internal employees to accept it, right? This isn't a tool that's going to take away from my job. No, it's not. It's going to supplant you. It's going to supplement your job. It's going to allow you to do things a little bit differently. It's going to cut down on all those inbound traffic that in reality is more of a nuisance, less of a revenue generator. Oh, <laughs> my